welcome to our final installment on stoichiometry. This time we'll be learning about theoretical and percent yields. Theoretical yield is just another name for something that you've already been calculating. It's the mass of the product that's expected starting from the limiting reactant. So in the previous lessons when you're calculating the amount of product that can be formed, that is actually called the theoretical yield. To find the theoretical yield, as we saw, you're just going to first determine the limiting reactant. That's now going to become your given. So as before, when you calculate the limiting reactant, the limiting reactant in terms of the moles of the limiting reactant, that's your given because that's what's going to limit how far the reaction can proceed. And now again, the mass of the product. And we say expected because you'll find out in a few minutes that we don't always get what we expect. And the mass of the product that's expected is going to be our wanted. And we determine that again from the moles of the limiting reactant. So let's take a look at how this works. Given this reaction, terbium 3 fluoride and calcium react to form calcium fluoride and terbium metal, what is the theoretical yield of terbium that can be produced if we react 27.5 grams of terbium 3 fluoride? with 6.96 grams of calcium. So first thing you realize is, well, we don't know which reactant is limiting. So the first thing you have to do is to find the limiting reactant. Let's go back and review how we do that. We'll take our 27.5 grams of terbium-3 fluoride, and we'll divide that by, or multiply that by one mole of terbium-3 fluoride over the molar mass. 215.9 grams per mole. By the way, if you can't find terbium on the periodic table, it is in the, uh, in the lanthanides, so in the first row in the F block, you should be able to find it. Cancel out the grams of terbium-3 fluoride, and we're le left with 0.127 moles of terbium-3 fluoride as our first reactant. Our second reactant is the calcium. The calcium is 6.96 grams of calcium, one mole over 40.08 grams of calcium, and that leaves us with 0.173 moles of calcium to react with. Now let's compare our ratios. Our first ratio is the moles of calcium to the moles of terbium-3 fluoride. You notice I put three, the one that has the three, the higher coefficient up on top. <coughs> and the moles of the terbium-3 fluoride on the bottom. Compare that to our actual stoichiometric ratio, two, 3 to 2 is a ratio of 1.5. Since the ratio is too low, that means that the terbium-3 is in uh, terbium -3 fluoride is more than enough, and the calcium must be limiting. And so we can just now do a theoretical yield calculation, a mass to a mole to mass problem, starting with our limiting reactant, which is the calcium. 0.173 moles of calcium. Our theoretical yield of terbium in grams is what we're looking for. Take our mole ratio, two moles of terbium to three moles of calcium. Let's cancel out the moles of calcium. Now we need the molar mass of terbium. So we're going to multiply by 158.93 grams of terbium, cancel out the moles of terbium, and our theoretical yield is 18.4 grams of terbium. All right, let's keep going. Percent yield is given by an equation which you actually have on your chart B. Percent yield is the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield, which you just calculated, multiplied by 100. Percent yield is really an indication of the efficiency of a reaction. You want this to be as close as possible to 100%, unlike percent error, which you want to be down at zero. The closer you are to 100%, the more efficient your reaction, the better your technique. Uh, everything seems to be working well when you're close to 100%. The actual yield is something that you're either going to measure experimentally, we have a lab coming up in which we'll do that, or in the problems you're going to be given uh, the actual yield to use to determine the percent yield when you calculate the theoretical yield. 
Now, let's talk about some reasons why we might not collect, why the percent yield might be not 100%. So if it's less than 100%, what might happen to cause the reactant not to go completely? One possibility is that you had impure reactants. If everything in your reactants is not what you think it is, you have less reactant than you thought, then you're going to get less of a yield than you think you should get. Another possibility is that you did not collect all the products. Uh, sloppy lab techniques, spilling, uh, sometimes you get adhesion of the product to the beaker, and all of these can cause your collection to be less than 100%. Also, not so important for us right now, but there are some organic reactions in which side reactions occur. And these side reactions can create unwanted or unexpected products that are not what you want. And these can, can often drastically reduce the percent yield. There are a couple of possibilities why you might get a percent yield greater than 100%. And usually this happens when you have a contaminated product. It can be contaminated often with water. A lot of our reactions take place in aqueous solution and we get a precipitate. When that precipitate gets filtered, there's still water there. We have to dry the, the, the filter, uh, the filtrate, but if we don't dry it fully, then the water is going to add to our mass and increase our percent yield. Also, if you have two products, then one of those products may contaminate the other, and we are going to see this in our lab next week. All right. Now, let's take a look. Percent yield calculations are actually very straightforward. To calculate the percent yield, as before, first determine the theoretical yield. As I said, you'll be given the actual yield, or you're going to determine the actual yield experimentally. And you just divide the actual yield by the theoretical yield and multiply 100. Let's look at our example in the previous problem. We determined that the theoretical yield of terbium was 18.4 grams. If you only collect 16.8 grams, what is the percent yield? Let's plug that into the equation. This is pretty straightforward. Don't forget to use the equation whenever you see percent yield. The actual yield, as we said, the actual yield is 16.8 grams of terbium. Actually, it always goes on the top. The theoretical yield, well, the theoretical yield, we saw that in the previous calculations, 18.4 grams, that goes in the denominator. Do the calculation, and we get 91.3% is our percent yield, and that's not too bad as a, as a general rule, although we like to be within about 5%. All right. Okay, now it's your turn. Let's take a look at this, this example problem. We have magnetite. Fe304, an important magnetic ore that has mixed uh, iron 2 and iron 3, can be prepared by heating up Fe2O3 and carbon monoxide to produce the Fe304 and carbon dioxide. So what I want to know is what are the theoretical and percent yields of the Fe304 if you react 68.9 grams of Fe2O3 with 5 grams of CO and that yields 59.2 grams of Fe304 as your actual yield. I'm going to stop the recording and stop the video and you do the calculations, go all the way through to the percent yield and start it up after you're done. All right, so you're back. The first thing we need to do is determine the limiting reactant. So let's plug everything in as we've done before, 68.9 grams of Fe2O3. Molar mass of Fe2O3 cancels out here and here, and we get 0 0.431 moles of Fe2O3. Let's do the same thing with the carbon monoxide. We have five grams of carbon monoxide. Its molar mass cancels out, and that cancels out. Sorry about that stray, stray red blob there. And we get 0.179 gram, uh, moles of carbon monoxide. Let's plug those into our ratios. Our first ratio, we have 0 0.431 moles of Fe2O3 over 0.179 moles of carbon monoxide is a ratio of 2.41. The actual stoichiometric ratio is 3 to 1. So because the Fe2O3 is too low, the numerator is too low, that means Fe2O3 is limiting. Okay, so we found that the Fe2O3 is limiting, so let's keep going. Next, we're supposed to find the theoretical yield. Did you do that? If not, or if you got something wrong, 
I'm going to pause the video again to let you go back and calculate the theoretical yield properly. Okay, we're back. So the theoretical yield, let's start off again with our moles of the limiting reactant. So the moles of the Fe2O3, this is our given now in our calculation. We want to now compare the moles of the Fe2O3 to the moles of the Fe3O4 in the balanced chemical equation. There's our ratio. 2 moles of Fe3O4 over 3 moles of Fe2O3. We cancel out the moles of the Fe2O3. That leaves us with moles of the Fe3O4. We have moles, but we want the theoretical yield must be in grams. So let's go ahead and multiply by the molar mass of the Fe3O4. Cancel out the moles of the Fe3O4 and do the calculation and we get 66.6 grams Fe3O4 is our theoretical yield. Now, you saw above that the theoretical yield is not the same as the actual yield. If you didn't get that theoretical yield, 66.6 .6 grams, I'm gonna pause the video one more time to let you actually calculate the correct percent yield. Go ahead and do that now. And we're back. So the percent yield, Let's take the 59.2 grams of the Fe2O3 that we started with. Where is it? There it is. Uh, that we were, I'm sorry, the 59.2 grams of the Fe3O4 that we had as our actual yield. And let's take the percent, the, uh, the theoretical yield, divide the actual yield by the theoretical yield, multiply by 100, and we are going to get 88.9% as our percent yield for this reaction. All right, so we are done with this lesson. We're done with stoichiometry. If you want to get a little extra help and some reading in, you can read section 12.4 in the text, pages 370 to 373. We will see you in class.